Today we'll be exploring the tool PM2. PM2 is a production level process manager for Node.js. It comes out of the box with various different features that we can utilize. It also comes with the functionality of monitoring tools. So all the processes that it manages, we can see the logs of each of those processes and monitor them. And one of the main pros of PM2 is the fact that it has got very low minimal downtime for every application it manages. So today I'll be showing you how to get started with PM2, all the basic commands that you need to know in order to get started. And I'll also show you how to set up a config file for PM2 to fine tune your strategies while you're managing different processes in your Node.js environment. In here, I've got two instances of VS Code running here. And these are the repositories that were used in the last videos to learn what proxy servers are and was used for demonstration purposes. So here I've got a proxy server and here I've got a simple express server. So if you didn't watch the last video, what this basically does is it proxies all the requests coming in to this API endpoint and forwards it to our express server right here and it just prints out a message saying get request received so this is what we have i'll attach the links of these two repositories down in the description below so now in order to get started first let us check out to the branch f slash pm2 added and in here the only difference here is i've added a function that gracefully terminates our express server and i've also added console logs um, to each of the requests so that when we are using the monitoring tool for PM2 we can see those logs so now in order to get started with PM2 first you have to install PM2 globally so for that you hit this command npm i PM2 um, dash G which signifies globally and you hit enter In order for PM2 to work, you'll also need to install BUN, which is a runtime environment for Node.js. So I'll install this as well. Once all the installations is complete, we can start using PM2. So first, let me show you how it works in a dev environment. So I'll hit this command PM2 hyphen dev, and I'll also mention the path of the file. So index.ts, which is our root of a server, hit enter. And you can see our development mode is started. And one of the good things about PM2 is that it supports hot reload. So if I make any changes and save it, it closes it and also restarts the server. So without the need of Nodemon, uh, this is being done. So this is the first thing I, I wanted to show you, which was the dev environment. But the more interesting part is how PM2 starts in a production level. So I just say PM2 start and i again given the path of the file so it's index dot uh, source slash index dot ts hit enter and you can see our uh, process is start uh, started here now let me go to localhost 4000 so i'll hit 4000 here and you can see we uh, our server is working just fine so as you can see here, this is running in a detached mode. So now if I hit PM2 list, it lists out all the processes that is running and I can still use this terminal without the need of using another instance of it. So now let me go to my other repository here and I'll start um, another process here. So I'll say PM2 start and I'll again mention the path over here, index.ts. You can see now we have two processes running simultaneously right here. Let's continue on exploring the different commands. So now let me show you how to restart a given process. So in order to restart now, all I have to do is say PM2 restart and give it the ID or the name of the process which I want to restart. So let me restart this zero right here and I hit enter and you can see here it has reflected. So it has restarted once. I could also stop a process so for that I'll just type in PM2 stop and give it the ID again which is one so now you can see this has stopped I can again start it so I'll just say 
start now let me delete a process so that now i can rename it so let me delete one so i'll say pm2 delete the process of id 0 and you can see that one has deleted now let me start it again so pm2 start i'll give in the path and i'll also say the name should be uh, ex server you can see we have a new process right here now the id is 2 and um, it is running so the other command which i wanted to show is pm2 monit which i think is a cooler one so you can see i have i can see the monitoring of it so let me just expand this a little more you can see so right now we don't have logs so let's get in some logs so i'll hit some request here okay this is not running let's see 8000 okay i probably know what that is so now in order to fix that let me go back here let me let me do one thing so the other command which i wanted to show is i want to delete all the process here so i'll say delete all so with this all the process has been deleted now let me clear my terminal go to this one right here and i'll clear this as well and this time around when i'm starting the process i'll give it a name so that i don't get confused so what was happening is i probably started a process of the same server so let me give it a name this time so i'll say name and i'll say ex server since this is our express server i'll say start and i started here i'll do the same thing here let me actually copy this portion right here oops okay let me go back here so this is our proxy server so let me do that proxy so and the root still remains the same i hit enter now you can see we have two processes now what i wanted to show you was the monitoring capability so git monit i'm not sorry not git pm2 monit and we can see the monitors so now let me go back here so this time around let me say 4000 so this is our simple express servers port and you can see get request received and if i go right here express server the log is uh, slash and this is because if i go back to my I'll just minimize this you can see i've console logged out the url that's why it is showing up here now let me again expand this i'll hit my proxy server endpoint this time so 8000 slash api slash get all i hit this thing get all request received now if i go back here the proxy servers you can see i'm getting certain logs and again if i go back to my proxy server right here this is the one and i let me minimize this you can see whenever a request is being made to this endpoint slash api uh, port 8000 i console log out the current date the request method url and the user agent so that is what i'm getting here and this proxies a request to our api get all so we are getting our logs now you can quickly notice that it becomes a hassle for me to jump between different repository and starting the pro processes stopping it restarting it so in order to streamline that now to, I'll quit this, so I'll say Control C. Now in order to streamline that, we can have a config file that orchestrates these processes. So first let me delete this one because this was when I was actually creating it. So we'll be generating that file. So in order to do that, all I have to do is PM2. I'll type in PM2 init sample. And this will give me a ecosystem dot config dot js file right here and this is what i have right now i'll just remove all of this and change it to my needs i'll save everything 
so now we've got two keys here script and watch so script is the path of the uh, server which you want to start and watch is whether you want that hot reload functionality so now in order to do this what i'll do is first thing i'll import path from paths of node.js and i'll change this to my location so it's path dot join i'll give it the d directory name and next up i'll say source index dot ts now i can also give it the name of the process so i'll say express server and let us have the hot reload capability now you would want to turn this off during production because perhaps first build it make sure there is no errors and then push it to production you would generally turn this off but for the sake of demonstration i'll turn this to true now i'll do the same thing i'll copy this again and paste it right here this time i'll say proxy server and i'll give it the dir name and i'll give the location of my proxy server so that's not in this repo I'll save everything and make sure there's a slash here and a slash here. I'll save again everything. Let me expand this. Now let me say uh, I'll clear everything first. I'll see all the process which is currently running. You can see we have two. I'll delete all of them. Now I'll clear it again. Now I'll say PM2 start and I'll give it the this file name right here. and I'll hit enter. So I'm getting an error saying script is not found. So probably the location is wrong and this should be YT instead. Let me save this and hit that again. So now you can see both of my servers are up and running and I also have watching enabled here. So now whenever I make a change here, I'll hit save and it should probably restart it. Let me say PM2 list. You can see it's restarted three times because I just hit save here. I'll hit save again. Now I'll print out the list again. You can see it's four. Now let me quickly paste some other configuration that we could do here. So in here I'll paste in some more configuration. So what I'm doing right now is there is a key called out file and error file. So if you have logs in your project, you could also create a file for it. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the my directory name and in this project itself, I'll have a folder called logs and I'll have a file called app.log and for an errors, I'll have app.error.logs. So I'll do this now. So what I can do is I can probably say PM2 restart this config file that should probably do it for me. Let's see whether this generates uh, logs for me. So now I'll go back here. I'll say slash 4000. It's my simple server. And I also hit, let's say API. Hit that. Let me go back here. This was a simple express. Okay, it, so it did not create those logs for me. So I probably have to delete this. So let me say PM2 delete. Now I'll clear everything and I'll start it again. So I'll say start. Now I'll hit say, okay, actually I think it did create logs for me here. You can see some logs here. There are no errors. Okay, no worries. I'll go back here. I'll say get all. And I did not get it. Why? Let me. Okay, API that no, endpoint does not exist. Fine. Let me go back here. So it is online. But for some reason, I cannot hit that endpoint. 
second port 4000 slash APA let's try it again it's weird okay it is hitting it now slash API get all okay so I'm starting to I'm, I'm probably hitting the wrong endpoint there so now let me check the logs you can see I am getting the logs right here slash API okay this is actually it's quite big so now it's continuously creating those logs okay so this is probably because if you go to index.ts you can see right here I'm always console logging out something and that's why this is continuously increasing so now let me also check this app.error.logs so for that let me throw in an error here so as you can see I have a middleware function that handles all the errors now if I comment this out I'll save it and if I hit this endpoint and if there is no post I'm just throwing an error let's see whether it generates an error for me so this is postman right here uh, I won't give it any post I'll save this so there's no error handling at this point you can see we're not getting anything now if I open app.error.logs you can see we're getting those errors so now you can see we have two I'll hit another time three so it should be the third time yes sir so we are getting those error logs as well so this is another functionality which we have so the next one we have is these two right here so I said that we can run this in two different modes um, so right now it's in fork we could also run it in a cluster without actually needing it to code and this instance is how many clusters do we want to run so we have a property I think it's called max based on your systems specifications uh, this will change so max if it can handle three processes it would do three if it's four it would do four so minus one is let's say the core of your system is four so then it would only spin up three processes so just um, n of minus one processes based on your system specification will be um, created I mean the processes now we have some other specifications as well so max memory restart so once it hits this one gigabyte the server should restart cron restart so every 24 hours if you want your process to restart restart delay so once it restarts so start it only after 10 seconds max restart min uptime um, so these are only some of the specifications that we can do we could do a lot more then if you have environments you could also set it right here that's all I wanted to show to you all about PM2 if you have any questions regarding it please drop them down in the comment section hope you all derive some value from this thanks for watching